So, why webcam imaging? Some of the advantages of webcam astrophotography. Webcams are a lot cheaper than conventional cameras or astronomical CCD cameras. Most webcams are USB plug and play, uh, meaning they're easy to install on the computer and they have fast download times. Webcams provide real-time feedback for focusing and exposure. You can adjust these on the fly. Webcams can create animated images uh, and movies of ch uh, changing events such as transits of the Jovian moon or lunar oculations of bright planets and stars. Webcams are in color. You don't have to go back and combine tricolor images for uh, doing lunar and planetary work. With the use of proper software, some of which is free, webcams can be used as auto-guiders for other forms of astrophotography. We're going to look at that in a future episode. The camera I use for lunar and planetary astrophotography or imaging is a Philips Vesta Pro. The most common webcams for astrophotography are the Philips 2Cam, the Philips Vesta, and the Logitech QuickCam Pro. Mead and Celestron have their own versions as well, and they're designed specifically for astrophotography. We'll take a look at both of those in a future episode. So, we have a webcam, now we need a way to get it attached to the telescope. The easiest way I've found is to use a commercial webcam adapter. I started out trying to do the whole film, film can thing and hot glue, and I just ended up with a mess. My advice to you is spend a couple of bucks and get a good quality threaded adapter. You can find them on eBay now. You can also get them at astronomy shops and you can find them online. I got mine from webcaddy.com.au. I actually purchased several adapters from the site and they've, I've been very happy with all of them. So, now we have a webcam that can fit into the eyepiece at uh, holder at prime focus. Now for the tricky parts. The CCD chip inside our webcams is really small and it's difficult to center a target. But even before we f uh, center, we need to be able to focus our camera. And uh, my favorite way is to make an eyepiece parafocal or parfocal, depending on how you choose to, uh, choose to say it. You place the camera in the scope and focus the image. Add a parfocal ring to, the, to a six to nine millimeter eyepiece and slide it in and out until you reach focus. Lock down the ring and you're good to go. Now, we can start with a 25 millimeter or so eyepiece and work our way up to the high power eyepiece, centering and focusing as we go. When you get there, you're ready to just drop in the camera and start shooting. Now, since this is a good time of year for Saturn, let's look at how we would go about imaging Saturn. First thing we would do is we set up our controls on the webcam. We set our exposure, our gain, and our frame rate. For cameras like the Vesta and the Tucam Pro, you need to keep your frame rate under 10 frames per second to prevent compression artifacts that will show up at higher frame rates. So, use your low power eyepiece to locate and center Saturn. Move to the next higher eyepiece, centering and focusing as you go. Then you drop in your nine to, uh, six to nine millimeter eyepiece and move on to your webcam, do a little bit more tweaking. Capture about four minutes of video. This should give you about 2,400 frames to work with. You can process the, pro the results in a program called Registax. And speaking of Registax, that's the software that we're gonna look at next week. So, go out, capture a bunch of video clips this week and you'll be ready for next week's tutorial. So, that's it for Webisode 1. If you'd like, send us an email at aaweekly at astroadventure.com. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.